Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who is everywhere present and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us. Cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master of our iniquities. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy mercy. sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto granting to thy people victory over their enemies, and by the power of thy cross, preserving thy commonwealth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Do thou, who of thine own goodwill was lifted up upon the cross, O Christ our God, bestow thy bounties upon the new nation which is called by thy name. Make glad in thy might those who lawfully govern, that with them we may be led to victory over our adversaries, have in thy name a weapon of peace, and a trophy invincible, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. O champion dread, who cannot be put to confusion, despise not our petitions of good and all prayers fail to us. Establish the way of the Orthodox, save those who have been called upon to govern us, leading us to that victory which is from heaven. For thou art she who gave us birth to God, and alone art blessed. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great goodness, we pray thee. Art and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for all pious and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. substantial life giving an undivided trinity always now and ever and unto ages of ages Amen. glory to god in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men glory to god in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men glory to god in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men O lord open now my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise O oh Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. O oh Lord, why are they multiplied that afflict me? Many rise up against me. Many say unto my soul, There is no salvation for him and his God. But thou, O oh Lord, art my helper, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all who without cause are mine enemies. The teeth of sinners hast thou broken. 
Salvation is of the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. I lay me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. <clears throat> o Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, nor chasten me in thy wrath. For thine arrows are fastened in me, and thou hast laid thy hand heavily upon me. There is no healing in my flesh in the face of thy wrath, and there is no peace in my bones in the face of my sins. For mine iniquities are risen higher than my head, as a heavy burden have they pressed heavily upon me. My bruises are become noisome and corrupt in the face of my folly. I have been wretched and utterly bowed down until the end. All the day long I went in downcast face. For my loins are filled with mocking, and there is no healing in my flesh. I am afflicted and humbled exceedingly. I roared from the groaning of my heart. O Lord, before thee is all my desire. My groaning is not hid from thee. My heart is troubled. My strength hath failed me. In the light of mine eyes, even this is not with me. My friends and my neighbors drew nigh over against me and stood, and my nearest of kin stood afar off. And they that sought after my soul used violence, and they that sought evils for me spake vain things. And craftiness all the day long do they meditate. But as for me, like a deaf man, I heard them not, and was as a speechless man that openeth not his mouth. And I became as a man that heareth not, and that hath in his mouth no reproofs. For in thee have I hoped, O Lord, thou wilt hearken unto me, O Lord my God. For I said, Let never mine enemies rejoice over me. Yea, when my feet were shaken, those men spake boastful words against me. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, and I will take heed concerning my sin. But mine enemies live, and are made stronger than I, and they that hated me unjustly are multiplied. They that render me evil for good slandered me, because I pursued goodness. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. O God, my God, unto thee I rise early at dawn. My soul hath thirsted for thee. How often hath my flesh longed after thee in a land barren and untrodden and unwatered. So in the sanctuary have I appeared before thee to see thy power and thy glory. For thy mercy is better than lives, my lips shall praise thee. So shall I bless thee in my life, and in thy name will I lift up my hands. As with marrow and fatness that my soul be filled, and with lips rejoicing shall my mouth praise thee. If I remember thee on my bed, at the dawn I meditated on thee, for thou art become my helper, and the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. But as for these, in vain have they sought after my soul. They shall go into the nethermost parts of the earth, they shall be surrendered unto the edge of the sword. Portions for foxes shall they be. But the king shall be glad in God, every one shall be praised that sweareth by him. For the mouth of them is stopped that speak unjust things. At the dawn I meditated on thee, for art, thou art become my helper. In the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Lord God of my salvation, by day I have cried, and by night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Bow down thine ear unto my supplication, for filled with evils is my soul, and my life unto Hades hath drawn nigh. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I have become as a man without help, free among the dead. Like the bodies of the slain that sleep in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. They laid me in the lowest pit in darkness and the shadow of death. Against me is thine anger made strong, and all thy billows hast thou brought upon me. Thou hast removed my friends afar from me. They have made me an abomination unto themselves. I have been delivered up and have not come forth. Mine eyes are grown weak from poverty. I have cried unto thee, O Lord, the whole day long. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Nay, for the dead wilt thou work wonders, <clears throat> or shall physicians raise them up that they may give thanks unto thee. Nay, shall any in the grave tell of thy mercy and of thy truth in that destruction. Nay, shall thy wonders be known in that darkness and thy righteousness in that land that is forgotten. But as for me unto thee, O Lord, have I cried, in the morning shall my prayer come before thee. Wherefore, O Lord, dost thou cast off my soul and turneth thy face away from me? A poor man am I, and in troubles from my youth, yea, having been exalted, I was humbled and brought to distress. Thy furies have passed upon me, and thy terrors have sorely troubled me. They came around me about like water. All the day long they compassed me about together. 
Thou hast removed afar from me friend and neighbor, and in my acquaintances because of my misery. O Lord God of my salvation, by day I have cried in my night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, bow down thy ear unto my supplication. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all that he hath done for thee, who is gracious unto all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine infirmities, who redeemeth thy life from corruption, who crowneth thee with mercy and compassion, who fulfilleth thy desire with good things. Thy youth shall be renewed as the eagles. The Lord performeth deeds of mercy and executeth judgment for all them that are wrong. He hath made his ways known unto Moses, unto the sons of Israel, the things that he hath willed. Compassionate and merciful is the Lord, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy. Not unto the end will he be angered, neither unto eternity will he be wroth. Not according to our iniquities has he dealt with us, neither according to our sins hath he rewarded us. For according to the height of heaven from the earth, the Lord hath made his mercy to prevail over them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our iniquities from us. Like as a father hath compassion upon his sons, so hath the Lord had compassion upon them that fear him. For he knoweth whereof we are made, he hath remembered that we are dust. As for man his days are as the grass, as a flower of the field, so shall he blossom forth. For when the wind is passed over it, then it shall be gone, and no longer will it know its place thereof. But the mercy of the Lord is from eternity, even unto eternity, upon them that fear him. And his righteousness is upon sons of sons, upon them that keep his testament, and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord in heaven hath prepared his throne, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, mighty in strength, to perform his word, to hear the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all you his works, in every place of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. In every place of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, hear my prayer, give ear to my supplication and thy truth. Hearken unto me in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath humbled my life down to the earth. He hath sat me in darkness as those that have long been dead, and my spirit within me has become despondent. Within me my heart is troubled. I remember days of old, and meditated on all thy works, and pondered on the creation of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee like a waterless land. Quickly hear me, O Lord, my spirit hath fainted away. Turn not thy face away from me, lest I be like them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for thee have I put my hope. Cause me to know, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk, for unto thee have I lifted up my soul. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord, unto thee have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of a brightness. For thy name's sake, O Lord, shalt thou quicken me. In thy righteousness shalt thou bring my soul out of affliction. And in thy mercy shalt thou utterly destroy my enemies. And thou shalt cut off all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. O Lord, give ear unto my supplication, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. O Lord, give ear unto my supplication, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of a brightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit both now and ever, and unto you ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. O our God and our hope, glory to thee. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the good estate of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all men, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who with faith, reverence, and the fear of God entered therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Father, Metropolitan Joseph, for the venerable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Metropolitan Paul and Archbishop John, and for their quick release from captivity and safe return, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for the President of the United States, for all civil authorities and for armed forces everywhere, especially for Peter, Ronnie, Andrew, Joshua, Benjamin, Thaddeus, Adam, Schuyler, Madison, and Will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For this city and for every city and land, and for the faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For healthful seasons, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For travelers by sea, by land, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, especially those suffering from the COVID virus, and for their families, for captives and for their salvation, for those under persecution for the faith, for our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God.
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us. Keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, never Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. To is risen from the dead, he who is the first fruits of those that slept, the firstborn of creation and the creator of all things created. He hath renewed by himself the nature of our corrupt race. Wherefore thou shalt reign no more, O death, for the Lord of all hath nullified thy power and dissolved it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. When thou didst taste death in the flesh, O Lord, thou didst check bitter death by thy resurrection and didst make man to prevail over it, restoring victory over the old curse. Therefore, O supporter and champion of our life, glory to thee, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, Gabriel, overwhelmed by the splendor of thy virginity and the abundant brilliancy of thy purity, hailed thee, saying, O Theotokos, what dutiful praise shall I offer thee, or what shall I call thee? I am overwhelmed with surprise and perplexity, but as I have been commanded, I shall hail thee. Rejoice, O full of grace. Because of thine immutable divinity, O Lord, and thy voluntary sufferings, Hades was overwhelmed and moaned within itself, saying, Verily, I am in dread fear of the person of this incorruptible body, for I see the unseen fighting me secretly, and behold those whom I have held shouting, Glory to thy resurrection, O Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us believers speak of divine things, of the secret and of of the secret of thine inscrutable crucifixion, of thine ineffable resurrection. For today have death and Hades been led captive, and the race of man hath been invested within corruption. Therefore do we cry in gratitude, glory to thy resurrection, O Christ, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, O Theotokos, the incomprehensible and boundless consubstantial with the Father and the Spirit, hast thou held secretly in thy womb. And by thy birth giving, we have learned to glorify in the world the act of the one immiscible trinity. Therefore, with gratitude, we cry to thee, rejoice, O thou that art full of grace. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The company of the angels was amazed when they beheld thee numbered among the dead. Yet thyself, O Savior, destroy the power of death, and with thee raising up Adam, and releasing all men from hell. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Wherefore, O women, disciples, do ye mingle sweet-smelling spices with your tears of pity? The radiant angel within the sepulchre cried unto the murmuring women, Behold the grave and understand, for the Savior is risen from the tomb. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Very early in the morning did the murmuring women run lamenting unto thy tomb. But an angel came toward them, saying, The time for lamentation is past. Weep not, but announce unto the apostles the resurrection. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The murmuring women mourned as bearing spices, they drew near thy tomb, O Savior. But the angel spake unto them, saying, Why number ye the living among the dead? In that he is God, he is risen from the grave. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We adore the Father, as also the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity in one end. Crying with the seraphim, Holy, holy, holy art thou, O Lord, both now and ever, and unto ages, ages, amen. In that thou didst 
and didst continue joy in place of sadness. And he who was incarnate of thee, both God and man, hath restored to life those who have fallen therefrom. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. O our God and our hope, glory to thee. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us. Keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. For blessed is thy name, and glorified is thy kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. the ointment-bearing women, the brilliant angel of sweet words, startling them, did say, Why seek ye the living one in the grave? He is verily risen, and hath emptied the tombs. Know ye therefore that the changeless one hath changed corruption to incorruption, and say to God, How dreadful are thy works, for thou hast saved mankind. Thou dost verily deliver the captivity of Zion from Babylon, O word, likewise draw thou me out of suffering into life. They who sow in Timon with divine tears shall reap with rejoicing the sheaves of eternal life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. With the Holy Spirit, every gift is good, for he doth shine forth together with the Father and the Son, and in him doth all creation live and move. If the Lord buildeth not the house of virtues, then vainly do we labor. But if he defend and protect our lives, none shall prevail against our city. The saints are verily the higher of the fruit of the womb, and they have not ceased to be thy sons in the spirit of Christ, and thou art like a father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. By the Holy Spirit hath all holiness and wisdom been observed, for he is the creator of all the essence of creation. Therefore let us worship him, for he is God, as is the Father and the Word. Happy are they who fear the Lord. For they walk in the way of his commandments and eat of the fruit of a universal life. Rejoice with gladness, O chief shepherd, as thou beholdest thy children's children around thy table, offering branches of good deeds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto you ages of ages. Amen. Verily, all the riches of honor are of the Holy Spirit, and of him, too, is grace and life for all creation. Wherefore, he is to be praised with the Father and the Word. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be so established that it shall not be moved. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be so established that it shall not be moved. Praise the Lord with a new praise. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be so established that it shall not be moved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For holy art thou, O our God, who rest in the saints, and unto thee we will strive glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything
everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise your God in his saints, praise him in the firm foundation of his power. Let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. And that we may be accounted worthy to hear the Holy Gospel, let us pray to the Lord God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Wisdom, stand upright, let us hear the Holy Gospel. And to thy spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Let us be attentive. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb they told this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. And he departed, wondering at what had happened. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory, glory to thee. Having me of the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus. mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know mine iniquity, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before me, that thou mightest be justified in thy words, and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sin did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones that be humble, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. 
Deliver me from the blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou had desired sacrifice, I had given it with whole burnt offering, thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit, a heart that is broken and humbled God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, in thy good pleasure unto Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built up. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Through the intercessions of the apostles, O thou who art merciful, blot out all the multitude of our transgressions, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Visit thy world with mercies and compassions. Exalt the horn of Orthodox Christians. Send down upon us thy rich mercies. Through the intercessions of our all immaculate Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, by the might of the precious and life giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven. At the supplications of thy honorable, glorious prophet, foreigner, and Baptist, John, of the holy, glorious, all laudable apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy holy apostles, of our fathers among the saints, great hierarchs and ecumenical teachers, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom, Athanasius, Cyril, and John the Merciful, Patriarchs of Alexandria, Nicholas of Myra, Spiridon of Trometheus, Nectarius of Pentopolis, the wonder workers of our fathers among the saints, Tikhon, patriarch of Moscow, and Raphael, the bishop of Brooklyn, of the holy, glorious, great martyrs, George, the trophy bearer, Demetrius, the mirth streamer, Theodore, the soldier, Theodore, the general, and Minas, the wonder worker, of the higher martyrs, Ignatius, the god bearer of Antioch, our Lampos Eleutherios of the holy great women martyrs, Thecla, Barbara Anastasia, Catherine Kiriaki Fotini, Marina Presca Venerine, of the holy glorious right victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God bearing fathers who shone in the ascetic life, Saint Barnabas, the patron and protector of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna of our venerable and God-bearing Father Athanasios the Athanite, founder of the great Lavra of Anathos, the venerable Lampados of Irenopolis, the venerable Hieromartyr Cyprian of Monathos, the 23 martyrs of Lesbos, the venerable Sergius the wonder worker whose memory we celebrate today, and of all thy saints, we beseech the almost merciful Lord Hearken unto the petitions of us sinners who make our supplications unto thee. Have mercy upon us. of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. 
on this day didst thou arise out of the grave and didst lead us from the bars and gates of death, thou who art great in compassion. On this day both Adam danceth and Eve rejoiceth, and with them all the patriarchs and the prophets chant unceasing hymns in praise of the godly power of thy dominion and might. Let heaven and earth dance today, and let them praise Christ God with one accord, for he hath raised from the grave them that were in bonds. All creation rejoiceth together as it offereth fitting songs unto our Redeemer and Creator of all. For having drawn mortals with himself out of Hades today as the giver of life, he exalteth them with himself up to the heavens. He dasheth down the arrogance of the enemy and breaketh in pieces the gates of Hades. By the power of God is his dominion and might. On July 5th in the Holy Orthodox Church, we commemorate our venerable and God-bearing father Athanasius of Athos and his six disciples who died with him. Anthony the Great was the inception of the fathers and divine Athanasius, their, God culmination, their godly culmination. On the fifth, angels took Athanasius and his disciples to the city of God. Born in Trebizond of God-fearing parents, he was, a, he, was an er, he was early left destitute, but by the providence of God, a high-ranking army officer took him to Constantinople and educated him there. Finishing his schooling, Athanasius eventually moved to the Holy Mountain to live in silence and strict asceticism. Many desirous of the ascetic life began to gather around him, and he was constrained to build the famous Lavra. The Byzantine emperors gave him generous help in this. Manifold temptations came upon Athanasius from demons and from men, but he, as a valiant soldier of Christ, resisted and overcame them all by his immense humility and unceasing prayer to the living God. Filled with the grace of God, he was found worthy to behold the most holy mother of God, who miraculously brought forth water from a rock. Death came to him suddenly in 1003. He, together with the six of his monks, had climbed up onto a newly constructed part of the church to inspect a wall that was in building when the wall fell in and buried them all. Athanasius appeared a number of times to his brethren after his death to console or rebuke them. On this day, we also commemorate the venerable, venerable hieromotor Cyprian of, of St. George Keeley on Athos, Vener, venerable Lampados of Irinopolis, the 23 martyrs of Lesbos, and the venerable Sergios, the wonder worker of Radonets. By their intercessions, O Christ God, have mercy on us. Amen. <coughs> I shall open my mouth, and it will be filled with the Spirit. And I shall speak forth to the Queen and Mother. I shall be seen joyfully singing her praises. And I shall delight to sing of her wonders. As a living and copious fountain of Theotokos, do thou strengthen those who in thy praises. And I join together in a spiritual company for thy servants. And in thy divine glory, make them worthy of crowns of glory. He who sits in clouds of glory upon the throne of the Godhead, Jesus the Most High God, came with mighty hand and saved those who cried out unto him. Glory to thy power, O Christ. All creation was amazed at thy divine glory. For thou, O unwedded virgin, didst hold within thee the God of all. And didst bear the fair, the eternal Son, who rewards with salvation all who hymn thy praises. As we the godly minded celebrate this sacred and all honorable feast of the Mother of God. Come, let us clap our hands together and glorify the God whom she bore. The godly minded children worship not the creature rather than the creator, but trampling upon the thread of fire in their new fashion, they rejoiced and sang. Oh, praise Lord and God of our fathers, blessed art thou. We praise, we bless, and we worship the Lord, the three holy children in the furnace, the child of the Theotokos saved. Then was the type, now is its fulfillment. 
and the whole world gathers to sing. All ye works praise the Lord and magnify him unto all ages. The fair told Moses and the mother of the light, let us honor and magnify in song. My soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without sin, there is God the word, and I truly feel to us we magnify thee. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden, for the hope of this fourth of the nations shall come and bless upon us. Keep us, O God, by thy grace. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and save us.
appeared in flashing raiment unto the mother-bearing women who bowed their faces earthward and let us be instructed of the arising of heaven's master and lord and with peter run to life in the lord's tomb and wondering at that which was wrought, let us remain to see Christ. Arise, arising like a morning star shining far off, thou camest from the east to the western regions, which thou hast enlightened with a brilliant rays. Let thy great virtue shine abroad. Cease not, O wise Athanasius, to pray the Lord for the whole world. O pure and hallowed Queen of all through the pleadings of thy much honored supplicant Athanasius, do thou now preserve and keep thy flock unscathed from all kinds of adversity, as it doth ever extol thee, for thou protectest the whole world. with the world doth glorify. Wherefore have mercy upon us. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Verily all creatures were filled with joy when they received thy glad tidings of thy resurrection. For Mary Magdalene coming to thy grave Let an angel in a brilliant robe, sitting on the stone, who said, 
praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp. O master lover of mankind, with thy light do we behold light, for thou art risen from the dead, granting salvation to the race of man, that the whole creation may glorify thee alone, who art without sin, have mercy upon us. Praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Truly precious in thy sight, O Christ, hath been the death of thy saint. For behold, even after death, how thy servant wondrously hath gushed forth from his holy foot. A spring of blood which does ever drive away all kinds of sickness and it doth put to flight spirits of wickedness which is blessed man while yet alive on earth fought against with bold resistance even unto blood. Praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Truly precious in thy sight, O Christ, hath been the death of thy saint. For behold, mm -hmm. even after death, how thy servant wondrous thief hath gushed forth mm -hmm. from his holy foot, a spring of blood which doth ever drive away all kinds of sickness and it doth put to flight spirits of wickedness which this blessed man lie yet alive on earth fought against with bold resistance even unto blood precious in the sight of the lord is the death of his saints Christ the Lord hath shown us mortal men thy relics venerable shrine as a fountain of miracles and a river filled with gifts hath a nation supremely wise for it hath granted their sight unto the blind and hath purged elephantesis away it cleanseth leprosy and those vexed with unclean spirits are set free from the demon's power, and they are made sound and whole. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Rejoice, adornment of ascetic saints. Rejoice, thou bright star of moms. Boast of shepherds, O venerable. Father Athanasius, thou, fellow dweller with all the just, rejoice thou, wellspring of love and chastity, rejoice thou, abode of the Holy Trinity, rejoice thou, brightly shining lamp of divine discernment, and all things rejoice, Upright rule of virtues and pillar endowed with life. <coughs> mm -hmm. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The
it is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the good estate of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all men, let us pray to the Lord. This holy house, and for those who with faith, reverence, and the fear of God entered therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Father, Metropolitan Joseph, for the venerable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Metropolitan Paul and Archbishop John, and for their quick release from captivity and safe return, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the President of the United States, for all civil authorities and for armed forces everywhere, especially for Peter, Ronnie, Andrew, Joshua, Benjamin, Thaddeus, Adam, Schuyler, Madison, Alex, and Will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. This city and for every city and land, and for the faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For healthful seasons, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by sea, by land, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, especially those suffering from the COVID virus, and for their families, for captives and for their salvation, for those under persecution for the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> for, our <clears throat> for our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing psalms to thy name, O Most High. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save Proclaim thy mercy at dawn and thy truth by night. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. So that they may declare that the Lord my God is fair and there is no injustice in him. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. For now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us. Keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord Calling to remembrance are all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, never Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. Amen. 
thine is the majesty, and thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The Lord is king, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, and he hath girt himself. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee, Alleluia. He established the world which shall not be shaken. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee, Become at thy house, O Lord, in the length of days. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Holy begotten Son, and immortal Word of God, who for our salvation is still to be incarnate. Oh, the holy Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, who without change is become a man, and was crucified, O Christ our God, trampling down death by death, who art one of the holy truth, Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us. Keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. For thou art a good God and lovest mankind, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
Wisdom, stand upright.
Brokemenon, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your great mercy. Create in me a clean heart, O God. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. <clears throat> Brethren, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us have no self-conceit, no provoking, no provoking of one another, no envy of one another. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. But look to yourself, lest ye too be tempted, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Peace be to thee that readeth, and to thy spirit. reading of the Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew. Glory to <clears> thee, O Lord. Glory to thee, O Lord. Let us attend. At that time, Jesus entered Capernaum, and a centurion came forward to him, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home in terrible distress. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered him, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to my slave do this and he does it. When Jesus heard him, he marveled and said to those who were following him, Truly I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west to sit at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go, be it done for you as you have to believe. And the servant was healed at that very moment. Intended to give healing, to give help to people. I'm a oh no.
but sometimes he would need to prove to those around him why this person was in fact worthy, that they had such good faith. And this man right off the start proved that. And yet the man wasn't done because at that point he says, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. Now this is like the cherry on the cake. He's really, he's really saying something here and it, it kind of choked me up a little bit when I heard the deacon reading it this morning. For this was a genuine humility. This wasn't just for show. It's also very highly unusual. Another very unusual thing in this story this morning because you know, there was a racial component going on. The Romans generally considered the Jews to be inferior, kind of a loathsome race. They hated, it was considered to be like a very bad assignment if you got sent to Palestine to watch over the Jews as a Roman officer. But obviously this man saw things differently. And he even confessed the Lord's power and authority as being so great that he could heal his servant with a word from where he stood. He wouldn't even have to come. It was a beautiful, beautiful faith and a strong faith. And as we heard, our Lord marveled to his followers and said, truly, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. Now these words were a great, uh, I don't know, compliment is not the right word but a recognition of this man. But at the same time, you know, it was a, a pretty bad condemnation of the state of the faith of Israel, that this outsider, this person who did not know the law, uh, had a greater faith than those he had discovered in among his own people. And in fact, the Lord, to drive the point home, in case anybody missed the subtlety, said, truly, I tell you, there will be many who come from east and west, that is, the nations, the Gentiles, the pagans, the unbelievers, who will sit at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown out into the outer, outer darkness. Their men will weep and gnash their teeth. So it's a pretty, pretty big statement that we have here from our Lord. The people whom God had called apart from all the nations of the world to become his own people, the ones to whom he had given the law and the ordinances to guide them, the prophets to correct them, and to whom at last he had given his son to save them. In the end, lack sufficient faith even to receive him. In sharp contrast to this man whose faith was clear-eyed and pure, instructing him in humility and granting him the confidence to beseech the God of mercy. This was a good faith. He came to the Lord knowing God would help him. This is the sort of faith that is always pleasing to God. And this is the sort of faith that we must cultivate, lest we also find ourselves in that place of sorrow and weeping and gnashing of teeth. This life is given to us to seek God and draw near to him in love. You know, sometimes people ask me about uh, current events, things going on in the world, and they'll ask, you know, do you think, uh, God has, is behind this. Do you think God has anything to do with this? Do you think, as if somehow anything ever happened in life that God didn't have something to do with? I tell people, look, this whole life, our existence, everything, is all about Jesus Christ. There is no other meaning or purpose. It's all about Christ. So yeah, I think so. <laughs> A life in Christ is life, period. A life without Christ is no life at all. A life well spent is one which enters into the communion of love with God, transforming all actions into works and expressions of love. We are meant to love God. This is what we are created for. There's no such thing. This whole thing about secular life, it's an illusion. 
It's not real. You know, I, I, I define if you, you know, by the way, I think we've got a new edition of the dictionary, according to Mike, coming out. But if you buy a copy of it, uh, no, really, that's a real thing. You can actually, no. Uh, <clears throat> secular, I define as the artificial attempt to live life without God. Because it's, it's, again, it's just not true. God is everywhere present and fill us all things. God made us. He, got, he made the world and the universe in which we dwell. Everything is about him or reflects him or is a manifestation of his love. And to live as if God is sort of, you know, an optional part of some people's lives, that's just ridiculous. And we live that way too much, don't we? <laughs> We tend to live secular lives as if God were just a part of our life. Someone we visit on Sunday, maybe. Someone we pray to once in a while for a few minutes a day. Uh, you know, this is not a condemnation. I hope that you do much better than that. I hope that God dwells in your heart and that you're constantly in communion with him. But I know that our tendency is somewhat less than that. And it's a struggle for us to get to a place of ongoing communion with God. It involves, of course, a continual renunciation of ourselves, of our self-love, which is equal to it, idolatry. To become transformed into this, this love of God requires a living out of his divine love. And in, um, of course, divine love is always about the love of the other, never about the self. It is to serve the other, to sacrifice for the other, to give for the other. Again, a struggle for us, because most of our conflicts with other people are always because, you know, if you want to really boil it down, and none of us would ever say it quite this way, but it's like, you didn't love me the way I wanted. You know? We never get angry with somebody because we didn't love them enough, but because they didn't love us in the right way or, you know, said something in, in some way which offended our self-love. We must daily, if we want to follow Christ, if we want to know love, the true love of God, if we want to live a not non-secular, but a Christian true life, we must always strive to live out this divine love, rejecting our tendencies to be selfish, to be angry, to lack forgiveness, to be envious, arrogant, unkind, and so forth. In fact, it's starting to sound a bit like, if you were paying attention, the epistle lesson today, in which Paul said, well, he described for us the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Before that, a few verses before, which we didn't read, he talks about all the bad stuff. Uh, but now he's talking about the good stuff. Fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are really important things. Things that, that if we had more of, we would be much happier people, and especially those around us would be much happier as well. But to gain these things, to gain this, these fruits of the Spirit, we must gain the Holy Spirit. This requires a life that is lived deliberately, with careful attention to ourselves in following Christ. The Holy Spirit is never, ever lacking in abundance of gifts for us. Never. You know, how do you bear fruit in the Christian life? Well, according to Jesus, he says, you just have to abide in me. Abide in me. I will grow the fruit. The vine doesn't grow the fruit. I, well, the branch doesn't grow the fruit. The vine does. Jesus is divine, right? And he grows the fruit if we abide in him. The only way that a branch cannot bear fruit is if it is in some way crushed or not connected well to the vine so that it cannot grow. How do you abide in Christ? You know, I mean, how do you bear fruit? Do you abide in Christ? How do you gain the fruits of the Spirit? You gain the Holy Spirit. How do you gain the Holy Spirit? You obey God. You walk in the Spirit, as St. Paul says. You know, he tells us, again, those couple of verses before that we didn't read, 
that we must walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh with its lusts and desires. That's what he's telling us we need to do. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't know what that means. It's Paul is speaking in mysterious language. What does it mean, walk in the spirit? I don't see the spirit. Where is the spirit? But you know, it's really not that mysterious. And if we don't overthink it, it's actually pretty obvious. To walk in the spirit is something that is actually very simple and well within the capability of each of us to do. It means that we simply obey God and fight all that stuff within us that resists God and allow God the freedom to work within us. Abide in Christ. Walk in the Spirit. Same thing. Obey God and resist those things. See, what happens when we get hung up is we don't resist those things or we don't obey God. Maybe why do we don't obey God? Maybe we're just not that interested or maybe we don't pay attention or maybe we don't know. You know, we should listen to the church. We should read our scriptures. We should know these things that teach us how to obey God, how to live. At this. It's throughout the scriptures, isn't it? When we read things like forgive one another and we think that's great until somebody offends us then Christianity goes out the window because we have to go through this whole convolutions of how offended we are by what they said or did. You know, when we're supposed to just forgive, that's obedience, forgive. It's not wait until you feel like it. It's not wait until you work it out. It's simply forgive. Or any of these things, to be kind, to be loving, merciful, generous. This is obedience. To live as Jesus lived, basically, always ready to serve, always eager to help, and fighting the desires of our flesh, the lusts. Because why? They're naughty? No, it's because <laughs> they take us away from God. The desire of the flesh to be, you know, selfish, to be, to be slothful, to be gluttonous, to be whatever, to be, you know, to, to not give generously to those around us. In every way, the desires of the flesh defeat what, what the epistles and the gospel teach us to do. To look out for one another, to consider the other person more important than ourselves. The desires of the flesh says, no, no, no I'm more important, really. You know, I am. We really find it hard to fight the desires of the flesh because we'd rather cater to them. It's more natural to us. In fact, by default, that's what we do. If we're not thinking, that's what we do. Unless we intentionally say, wait, I don't want to give in to this anger. I don't want to bear this grudge. I, I want to look for a way to be reconciled with this person. I want to be able to help this person, whatever. I don't want to just do what I, what I do, right? We have to fight ourselves. Isn't that what I think Paul is talking about when he says, walk in the Spirit, not according to the flesh? Now, obviously, it's more than that because the Holy Spirit is a real and living person and exists in us to provide us that help, that guidance, that life, that power. But he's waiting for us to say, yes, yes, Lord, please. <laughs> I don't even need you to come into my house. Just from where you are, tell me what to do <laughs> and give me the grace to do it. It's really... An important thing that maybe we don't think often enough about how how we must have this kind of faith this faith that really really does believe and is eager we don't want to go on thinking perpetually well I struggle with sloth I struggle with this I don't really love God all these things may be true but we don't want to get stuck in that definition of ourselves we want to believe I can have faith, I can have faith, <laughs> and, I can, and I can follow the Holy Spirit, and I can have his life in me, and I can bear much fruit as a branch on the vine. And that's a good thing, that's a beautiful thing. Happy are they who follow this. And it's a thing that God does for us. It's not something we have to do. Do you ever see, I don't know if you ever spent any time in a grape, uh, what do you call it, a vineyard, I was going to say an orchard, a grape orchard, a vineyard. But, you know, you look at these little branches that are on these vines, little, you know, they're not sitting there going, fruit, 
you know, trying to squeeze out a grape. They don't even have to think about it, it just happens because they're connected to the vine. We need to live in such a way that we are connected to Christ and stop on disconnecting ourselves every time. It can be a simple thing, like when we walk away from our prayers in the morning without doing them, you know? That's just a little thing and it's not gonna make the difference between heaven and hell. But it's one little way that we say no to God, you know? Maybe one way that we should say yes to God instead, to come back to him, to return to him, to open him, to welcome him, to live for him. Because the other thing we don't like to think about, but I think we really must consider, because that's implied in our lesson today and throughout the Gospels, is that not all Christians will acquire the Holy Spirit in life. Some, either by neglect or by disobedience, will miss out. And that's a fact. There will be some of the people of God who will be cast into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. God sends us little tests in life. I don't think anybody ever gets caught by surprise. Like, I thought I was going to heaven. How do I wind up here? No, it's not, it's, it doesn't happen like that. But we can be really oblivious. And so God helps us. He helps us throughout life by sending us tests it might be a trial. It might be a struggle. It might be that person that really annoys you or irritates you or that you think just should go away that you need to really show love for. And that's your test. That's to find out if the spirit is within you. you know? And if you fail that test, we're surrounded all the time by annoying, irritating people. What are you looking at me for? And... Do we ever realize, oh yeah, maybe this is a test of whether or not I have the love of God in me, in my heart, that I have the Holy Spirit, that I can get past my flesh to love this person in the Spirit, or find a way to help, or to find a way to be reconciled, or simply find a way to deal with the situation more successfully than just having a fit and falling in it. We may discover in our little tests that we lack forgiveness or some other virtue. And if we discover this, we should strive all the more to abide in Christ and bear more fruit. The really, I think, the only way that we can miss out is to be inattentive, other than perhaps be outright rebellious and say, nah, you know, I, I just, I don't wanna believe in God anymore. But even that happens eventually through just simply being inattentive, to being way too casual about our Christian life. We need to pay attention. The inattentive will blame others, or they'll grow weary of following God at all. You know, it says weeping and gnashing of teeth. I've wondered sometimes what that means, because that seems to me to be two different things. Weeping implies sorrow, right? Gnashing of teeth implies anger. So I think those who are cast out will have one or the other. Either sorrow because they neglected their chance, their opportunity, or anger. Blaming God or blaming others. You know, this is not the way to be. We do well if we blame ourselves <laughs> and repent and try to live for God. We don't want to become like the former children of Israel who lost, who Christ came to in love, and they crucified. This lesson, a tragic lesson, is given for our instruction. So if we wish to seek a commendable faith, a faith that our Lord marvels, and look, you know, says this is a true faith, be it done to you as you have believed. Well, this is the faith that we need, a faith that is simply attentive, that seeks deliberately to live by the Holy Spirit, to resist the flesh, it doesn't just mean, you know, we think of flesh, maybe we think of sexual lusts or something like that. Well, that hardly exists in the world today at all, right? I mean, just every computer or cell phone you see, there's stuff there. But no, it, it's much more than that. It's just those little times that we're too tired or too, I don't know, just turn away from God. Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's just simple stuff like that. Those little things that we always make excuses for that happen over and over again. It's time to realize every opportunity is a precious one. 
and seek God. Choose to live for God over a muddled faith of compromise, and you will be happy and fruitful in Christ our Lord, to the glory of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us. Keep us, O God, on thy grace, wisdom. That are it always by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
Let us complete our prayer unto the Lord. For the precious gifts now set forth, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those with faith, reverence and the fear of God entered therein, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, all things good and profitable for our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, for a Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life Unto Christ our God. To the 
compassions of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with that all holy good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing and eternally the same, thou and thy only begotten Son and thy Holy Spirit. Thou it was who didst bring us from non existence into being, and when we have fallen away, didst raise us up again, and didst not cease to do all things until thou hast brought us back to heaven and hast endowed us with thy kingdom which is to come. For all these things we give thanks unto thee and to thy only begotten Son and thy Holy Spirit for all things of which we know and of which we know not, and for all the benefits bestowed upon us, both manifest and unseen. And we give thanks unto thee also for this ministry, which thou dost vouchsafe to receive in our hands, even though there stand beside thee thousands of archangels and ten thousands of angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring aloft, borne on their pinions. 
singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying. shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Amen. Having in remembrance therefore the saving commandment and all those things which have come to pass for us, the cross, the grave, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the session at the right hand, and the second and glorious end. Thine own of thine own, we offer unto thee, in behalf of all and for all. which is in this cup, the precious blood of thy Christ, changing them by thy Holy Spirit, that to those who shall partake thereof, they may be unto cleansing of soul, unto the remission of sins, unto the communion of thy Holy Spirit, unto the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, unto boldness toward thee, and not unto judgment or unto condemnation. And again, we offer unto thee this reasonable service for all those who in faith have gone before us to their rest. Patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. It is true.
Among the first be mindful, O Lord, of our Father and Metropolitan Joseph, whom do thou grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, and rightly dividing the word of thy truth. And all mankind. And grant us with one mouth and one heart to glorify and praise that all honorable and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Calling to remembrance all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts which have been offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. That our God who loveth mankind, receiving them upon his holy, heavenly, and ideal altar for an order of spiritual fragrance, will send on upon us and return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Asking for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. Save, O Lord, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon Thee, the heavenly God as Father, and to say. and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be to all. And to thy Let us bow our heads to the Lord. and love toward man of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Look down, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, from thy holy dwelling place, and from the throne of the glory of thy kingdom, and come to sanctify us, O thou who sitteth on high with the Father, and are here invisibly present with us, and vouchsafe by thy mighty hand to impart unto us an immaculate body and precious blood, and through us unto all the people. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. Let us attend. Holy things are for the holy.
I believe, O Lord, and I confess that Thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who has come into the world to save sinners, out of the mind of sheep. And I believe that this is truly my own natural body, and that this is truly my own precious blood. Wherefore I pray thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and deed, of knowledge and of ignorance, and make me worthy to partake of that congregation, of thy immaculate mysteries, unto the remission of my sins, and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystic supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mysteries to my enemies. Neither will I give thee a kiss as to Jesus, but like a thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. Not in judgment, nor under condemnation, be my partaking of thy holy mysteries, O Lord, but unto the healing of soul and body.
Yeah. <laughs>
God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. We are seeing our true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith. Worshiping the undying Trinity, who has saved us. Always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let our mouths be filled with thy praise, O Lord, that we may sing of thy glory. For thou hast made us worthy to partake of thy holy, divine, immortal, and life creating mysteries. Keep us in thy holy hands, that all the day we may meditate upon thy righteousness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Attend. Having partaken of the divine, holy, immaculate, immortal, heavenly, life-giving in us and mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. We give thanks unto thee, O Lord, who lovest mankind, benefactor of our souls and bodies, for that thou hast vouchsafed this day to feed us with thy heavenly and immortal mysteries. Make straight our path, establish us all in thy fear, guard our life, Make firm our steps through the prayers and intercessions of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all thy saints. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O Lord, who blesses those who bless thee, and sanctifies those who would dare trust in thee, save thy people and bless thine inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house, glorify them in recompense for thy divine power, and forsake us not who hope on thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to the priests, to 
blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his grace and love towards men, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. May he who rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the intercessions of his all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, at the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet, foreigner, and Baptist John, of the holy glorious and all laudable apostles, of our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose divine liturgy we have now celebrated, of the holy, glorious, and right victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, of St. Barnabas, patron and protector of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of our venerable and God-bearing father, Athanasios of Athos, the founder of the great Lavra on Athos, the venerable hieromartyr Cyprian of St. George Kelly on Athos, the venerable Lampados of the our Irenopolis and the 23 martyrs of Lesbos, and the Venerable Sergios, the wonder work of Radonis, whose memory we celebrate today. And of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. <laughs>